Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into your weekly dose of college football. Guys, let's just get right into it. The college football playoff rankings came out last night. Here they are. Uh, you've still got Alabama at second. You've still got Oregon over Ohio State. And then, because there was really no drama yesterday, the, ma the major talk centered around to if Michigan was still going to be ahead of Michigan State. That talk made no sense to me. Michigan just got a very quality win over Penn State. How would they drop below Michigan State? who beat Maryland at home. I understand the whole head-to-head -head thing. Um, and then, of course, you've got... Guys, the thing is, Mississippi State being ranked... I'm not. It's not even worth it. It's not worth my energy. We know what it is. I don't know how Purdue... I, I guess they got blown out by Ohio State, but to me, they're a top 25 team. Penn State's a top 25 team to me. Uh, how about Houston? I think Houston might actually be able to beat Cincinnati. That's a team they've won nine straight games. They enter the rankings. That's good news for Cincinnati, but I'd be a little bit scared if I was a Cincinnati fan based on my recent play and how I'm playing. Uh, Oklahoma falling to number 13. They're basically out of it, I would say, at this point. I mean, even if they went out at the, you know, being 13th, that's really low. They referenced last night on the show the lowest the team had ever been ranked, but still made the playoff at this point in the season was ninth, which is where Oklahoma State is. So maybe if Oklahoma State wins out, they win Bedlam, they win the Big 12 Championship, they would make it. But I just want to talk about this Ohio State, Oregon, Michigan State, Michigan head-to-head -head controversy because that's kind of the major thing that's going on right now with the committee. And it, it just blows my mind because if you wanted to make the argument Two teams have the exact same record, have very similar resumes. The one team beat the other team, but you still think the team that got beat is better? That argument would be Ohio State over Oregon because that game took place in Week 2, meaning Ohio State and Oregon have both changed a lot since Week 2. Oregon lost to Stanford. Ohio State was starting a very young, inexperienced quarterback. You could say that head-to-head -head means less because both of those teams have changed. That was a very early season game. They're throwing this out there like Michigan's better than Michigan State. And listen, I agree. If you put Michigan and Michigan State on a neutral field, I would favor Michigan. But that game happened like, you know, three, four weeks ago. It just happened. So, like, if you really want to dig your heels in and say head to head really doesn't matter, we're just going to rank the best team ahead if they have the same record. Why, like, Ohio State and Oregon is the perfect scenario to rank Ohio State above Oregon because the game took place in week two. You guys understand what I'm saying? So, same resume, both one-loss teams, the one team wins head-to-head, -head, but you think the other team is better, it's easier to, to justify putting Ohio State above Oregon than it is Michigan above Michigan State because that Michigan-Michigan State game just happened on Halloween Eve as, a, as opposed to the Ohio State-Oregon game happening in early September. Uh, so I really don't understand why is that what they dug, dig their feet into that it just makes no sense to me. It's like Oregon has to stay above Ohio State no matter what. Guys, I'm not worried about Oregon at all. I think they're going to get handled this weekend by Utah. I've said that for a while. Utah is ranked 23rd. They've got a big opportunity to move, to move up significantly if they do beat Oregon. And then you can see Texas A&M moving down to number 16. Uh, and then, I mean, Arkansas being 21st, they face Alabama. They're going to get, I don't know if they'll get crushed, but they're going to lose that game. Let's get to some Week 11 takeaways. Uh, James Franklin, 10-9 and nine in his past two seasons. That's rough, man. I, when I saw Penn State was 3-4 and four in conference, I guess that's what losing to Illinois will do you, but I thought they were better than 3-4 and four this year. Ohio State offense, best in college football. We knew that. Uh, Michigan, the best pass rush in college football. They do have two really elite pass rushers. Uh, it's impressive. The ACC, Wake Forest, Pitt are the in the driver's seat. That would be a fun championship game. Big 12 playoff hopes are gone. Not necessarily. Maybe Oklahoma State has an outside ch chance there if they win out. Old Miss, New Year's Six Bowl team. Eh, I'm, I, I really don't want to see them in a New Year's Six Bowl. And then Georgia won't win a title without JT Daniels. I used to believe that, but based on how good this Georgia defense is, we are in 2021, and it's crazy to say this about college football in 2021, but at this point, based on what I've seen from the Georgia defense, it's almost like you can win it with the game manager that is Stenson Bennett as long as he doesn't turn the ball over. Like, have a game manager, let your defense win you these games. I will say, Georgia's schedule, a little bit fraudulent. I was just thinking back to this. Before the season, I had said, Georgia has a really easy schedule. The only tough game is week one against Clemson. Turns out, 
Clemson was really just an average football team this year. No one expected that. So it's like Georgia's schedule. Like, who is Georgia beaten exactly? Arkansas at home. Like, like, I, like they really haven't beaten anyone, but I, they are the best team right now in college football. They have the best defense, and they, I truly do believe they could win a title with Stenson Bennett at this point based on how well their defense is playing. Who is in the playoff? This is a really unique scenario. So you've got Oklahoma State winning out. Notre Dame, okay, Notre Dame has zero chance to make the playoff. You want to know why Notre Dame has zero chance to make, the, to make the playoff? Because they lost at home to Cincinnati. And the thing is, even if Cincinnati loses a game but still wins the American, um, they would have one more win, meaning they'd be 12-1. and one. They'd be a conference champion, something Notre Dame has no chance at being because they're an independent, and they would have the head-to-head -head win over Notre Dame. So I don't see Notre Dame moving ahead of Cincinnati. To me, Notre Dame has zero chance to make the playoff at this point, even with the 11-1 and one record. And also, the key, win, the key wins are really lagging. Wisconsin's a really good key win. Purdue is decent. But Virginia without Brennan Armstrong, that's your key win. That's just not good enough for, for, for your third key win. And then this would be... This would mean that I believe... Michigan State would beat Ohio State, so Michigan State would go to the Big Ten Championship. Michigan would finish beating Ohio State and finish 11-1. and So Michigan State is in the playoff. Georgia is in the playoff. Maybe Alabama, and then there'd be one spot left. Or maybe Cincinnati, and there'd be one spot left. This is a very unlikely situation scenario because, number one, Ohio State is not losing to Michigan State. If Ohio State beats Michigan State, Ohio State would have zero losses in conference. Michigan State would have two. That would eliminate Michigan State from uh, the you know Big Ten championship consideration out of the East, and then it would come down to as long as Michigan this weekend beats Maryland, it would come down to the game uh, Ohio State Michigan next weekend because Michigan would have one loss. Ohio State would have zero losses if Michigan wins. They're tied with one loss in, in conference, but Michigan has the head-to-head. -head, they go. So that's what it would come down. Very unrealistic scenario, but still interesting. Um, so this is a 16, 16 team playoff. I have been big into expanding the playoff. I think it'd be a great idea, but 16 teams, that's too much. The, to me, it's just, I still want it to be an incentive to be a top four team. Like, like if you go to the 12 team, the top four teams get buys week one or round one, and then they host round two. So there's still a major incentive, a major advantage to being one of the four best teams. I think that sh should still be a major goal for these programs. You go to the 16-team playoff, Georgia, like it's just, you're really not giving the top two or three teams the elite teams. Like it makes the regular season not matter. And that's been the argument against the 12 team. You can see the 12 team right here. I just think this is so much more well-balanced. Like Oklahoma State versus Notre Dame, winner faces Georgia in Georgia. Cincinnati, Old Miss, winner faces Ohio State in Columbus. Like, that's just so much more balanced to me. Like, it gives the top seeds much more of an advantage. That's why I like the 12 team over the 16 team playoff personally. I saw this uh, on Twitter first and then on Instagram. SEC Championship early betting line, Georgia three point favorites over Alabama. So, my take on that right now, I would bet Georgia minus three against Alabama. Um, we'll see what it ends up in. I also saw the over-under at around 49, which I was shocked by. My guess is when this game actually happens, because we expect Bama to, I think all Bama has to do is win one out of the next two games versus Arkansas and then uh, versus Auburn, win one out, and then they're going to the championship. So my guess, the over-under on this game is probably going to be around 53-54. That's what it's going to open up at, as, and I would guess Georgia would open up around four and a half point favorites. Right now, the line is Georgia by a field goal. I think that gets bet up if it gets if that's what it opens as. College football top 25 by conference. Uh, I really think you're missing here. The the Big Ten really should have at least six, maybe seven teams when you're talking about about Penn State and and um, Purdue. Uh, the SEC, I'm fine with all of those teams being ranked except for Mississippi State. They're just not that good, man. I, it just, come on. I, and I'm not one of those people that hates teams that have a lot of losses. Like, you know, it, it's not the fact that Mississippi State is 6-4. and four. They're just not that good, and they have bad losses. Uh, three teams out of the Big 12, the same three that we normally see. The ACC with three teams. Uh, the Pac-12. We'll see what Utah can do. Man, the Pac-12 is bad. Holy crap. Uh, how about two independents? Two independents making it. Uh, two from the American. We'll have to see. If SMU wins this week, they'll be ranked as well. But obviously, that would significantly hurt, hurt Cincinnati. Active FBS win streaks. This is always something interesting to look at. You've got Georgia at 14 games. But look at number four, Houston. 
Houston lost their first game of the season and they've won nine straight. I thought that was interesting. Not many teams, not many people are talking about that. This is always a really fun graph to look at. So you want to be in the top right quadrant. That is the elite of the elite. And if you look at the top right, there's nobody in it. So I know a lot of people think Georgia is this super elite, elite team, but um, it has their defense graded out actually slightly below I think Wisconsin, because the farthest to the right is the best defensive team. The farthest to the top is the best offensive team. That's a battle between Ohio State and Coastal Carolina, but Ohio State's had a much tougher schedule than Coastal Carolina. Uh, but it's just interesting. And then you take a look at the bottom left, which is the worst teams in college football. You've got, where's UMass at? There's no way. They're missing UMass. UMass is the worst team in FBS I'm not seeing them. I'm seeing Akron. I'm seeing Arkansas State. They've got a great logo. I'm seeing New Mexico State, of course. I'm seeing Connecticut. I don't know where UMass is at. Maybe they forgot them, but um, really interesting. Look at Kansas. <laughs> the worst offense in college football looks like uh, UConn, maybe Southern Miss. Also, no, I think New Mexico. They, they average the least amount of points per game, New Mexico. I didn't realize that. Power 5 championship games, if the season ended today, that Wake Forest pit matchup would be really fun. It'd be really fun. It'd be fun to not see a, you know, a Clemson, you know, team in the ACC championship. We haven't seen that in a while. Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State, that's not going to end up happening due to those two teams facing each other. One of them is going to get knocked out of it. Wisconsin, Ohio State, same old, same old for the Big Ten. We thought it was going to be Minnesota. We thought it was going to be Iowa out of the West, but Wisconsin has completely taken control. And then it's just a matter of Ohio State winning out to be in for them. Uh, Oregon versus Utah, that game's happening. I don't want to see that game happen again. I really don't. And then Alabama, Georgia, we know that's a lot to happen. That's going to be a huge one. The current Heisman odds, the Heisman race has turned into a really fun three-man battle between Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, and Kenneth Walker. That's the main guys in it. You can see the top six there. But right now, I think it's completely wide open. Like, whoever has the best three-game stretch, I think, is going to win the Heisman, whether that's Kenneth Walker, CJ Stroud, or... Bryce Young. I will say Michigan State fans made a really good point uh, that I had seen because they were saying, you know, where would this Michigan State team be without Kenneth Walker? Who knows? I predicted Michigan State maybe to make a bowl. Like, the reason they're so good, there's a lot of reasons, but Kenneth Walker is a main one. You could really plug in anyone into that Alabama offense at quarterback. Same thing with Ohio State. You take a look at their skill position players and how good they are. And I'm not saying they'd put up the same stats as Bryce Young and C.J. Strout, but they'd still be really good. If you're talking about overall effect on a program, I would say Kenneth Walker's had the most effect, but it's not really going to matter if Kenneth Walker gets shut down by Ohio State. I'm sure Ohio State's going to want to shut Kenneth Walker down, make Peyton Thorne beat them, and then Kenneth Walker has another tough uh, matchup the next week, which is the final week of the regular season against Penn State. So that's tough for him. CJ Strout, huge opportunity this week against a very bad Michigan State secondary to really go out, throw for four or 500 yards, four or five touchdowns, and really cement him as his place. But his work will not be done at that point. He still has Michigan on the road. Very good defense there. As for Bryce Young, Arkansas this week, he should put up some good numbers. Auburn, not as big as a rivalry, kind of Auburn losing, took this thing out of it. Bo Nix getting injured. Uh, but really with Bryce Young, it's just going to come down to how does he play against Georgia. And it's a major opportunity for him, but it's also one of those things to where this is George's, Georgia's defense we're, talk we're talking about. He's probably not going to play that well against this. It's an absurd defense. If he plays really well, you're probably going to have to give him the Heisman. But, you know, this is a fun three-man race. We'll have to see what happens in that. So this is what Jamison Williams said. I'm not sure if this is a real quote or not. He says, I don't claim them. Ohio State fans be tripping. They disowned me. I'm not sure if that's a real quote. This might be like a meme page or something, but the whole Jamison Williams situation is really interesting. He transfers from Ohio State to Alabama and becomes their wide receiver one. Ohio State with Chris Olave, Jackson Smith-Najigba, and Garrett Wilson already there. He did, he wasn't going to see a ton of you know a ton of targets. He transfers it to Alabama. Really smart move by him. I'm not sure if this is a real quote, but uh, apparently he doesn't like Ohio State fans. So the LSU coaching search right now, all anyone's talking about is Lincoln Riley. There's something going on at Oklahoma right now, and I would not be surprised one bit if the next LSU coach is Lincoln Riley. So there's no sources there. 
but as you can see, uh, LSU fans, I'm sure, want Lincoln Riley. To me, it seemed like Lincoln Riley wanted to win one national title with Oklahoma, and the second he won a national title, he would dip to the NFL. He's like the prototypical young NFL offensive-minded Sean McVay type, Cliff Kingsbury type, right? Kevin Stefanski offense, QB guru. Like, it seems like he fits the modern-day NFL so well, but he just wanted, like, one national title. We really haven't heard any Lincoln Riley rumors to the NFL, which is surprising, but we're getting some to uh, LSU. You know, going from Oklahoma to LSU, you do go to the SEC, although Oklahoma's going to be in the SEC, so maybe that's a bit, little bit more of a lateral move, but I'm sure LSU would offer him a very lucrative contract, and LSU does recruit better than Oklahoma. They have a really nice talent pool in Louisiana, and they always lock down their state, so I could see him being very interested in LSU, but with Oklahoma going to the SEC, maybe that's a lateral move. If, if Oklahoma was staying in the Big 12 and you wanted to go to a big SEC school, I would understand it more. Uh, but again, to me, Lincoln Riley seems more like an NFL type young coach, Sean McVay mold type of a coach. So really interesting stuff there. This was the halftime. Th this game was crazy. The halftime score, Ohio State, Purdue, 45 to 17. Ohio State had 52 points with 10 minutes left in the third quarter. It was crazy. Uh, they don't finish with 59 because they kind of took off the, the, their foot off the gas. They were playing a shell defense against Purdue there in the second half. Purdue threw for some yards, but Texas. Oh my goodness, man. I, I, again, I'm going to make the argument Texas going to the SEC is a good move for them because they just need something different. They need something to sell recruits, something different. You're still Texas. You, you're still a major program in college football, but this is yet another season where it is significantly below expectation significantly it's crazy and then losing to Kansas I, Jesus so these are some takeaways uh, Kansas is back firing Tom Herman was a mistake Kansas is what I, I'm not even sure what that he's, he means by that firing Tom Herman was a mistake no it was not a mistake he's not a good coach uh, Dan Mullen has mentally checked out uh, of this year Dan Mullen is checked out of Florida he's done at Florida uh, Michigan, very good chance of beating Ohio State. Harbaugh clutch, no. Michigan's a very good coach team. They're not beating Ohio State. Uh, playoff chances are over for Oklahoma. Will not win Big 12 this year. I agree. At some point, you just got to admit it's not your year. And this year, it's just clearly not Oklahoma's year. Auburn student section was a disgrace, disgrace to all student sections. I don't even know the situation there, honestly. Uh, Pitt, best all-around team in the ACC. Pickett for Heisman. Yeah, Pickett is not going to win the Heisman, but he's having a great season. Good for him. And Pitt, they very well might be the best team. Them and Wake Forest would be a really fun matchup once again. Oregon State, second best team in the Pac-12. Oregon is in trouble. No, Oregon State is a fun team. They have a nice offense, but Utah is the second best team in the Pac-12, and they are going to beat Oregon. I agree that Oregon's in trouble. SEC playing cupcake games in November is a disgrace. Uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, you, you basically know what you're going to get. And this was a funny tweet from uh, Reddit College Football. Wins over bowl eligible teams. Northern Illinois 3, Alabama 2. It's just a fun tweet. that you know Because the thing is, like, bowl eligible, some bowl eligible teams aren't even good. But it's still, you know, it's a funny tweet that Northern Illinois has more wins over bowl eligible teams than Alabama. I thought I would end it off with that. But, guys, make sure you're following me on... Twitter, link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, The Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.